My name is Mike Mahoney, and I am the owner and founder of Elite Podcast Academy. All podcasters need a digital podcast workstation to create their content. For many, this is a luxury they simply cannot afford. For others, it is something they need no matter the cost. Now, I want to show you how you can build an amazing digital workstation on a budget by following the information provided, you will save a lot of money. And I will help you avoid spending on equipment you just do not need. At the same time, your digital workstation will contain amazing equipment at a reasonable cost. Now, the microphone is a key element in your digital podcast workstation as it's the first piece of equipment in the audio chain. No doubt, you've heard the phrase garbage in and garbage out, and that's exactly true when it comes to microphones. If you bring in terrible audio, there's very little you can do later on to fix it. Yes, there are tools that can make your audio quality better, but they are time consuming. It's best to get it right during the recording, and that's where a great microphone comes in. Now, you need to know what a good microphone does. Now, different microphones are better suited for different jobs. If you don't know what mic is best for podcasting, it can be a big obstacle. Unfortunately, most newbie podcasters buy a microphone that looks really cool, but it sounds terrible. I'm hoping to help you avoid that costly mistake. Now, it's possible to spend a lot of money on a microphone, but it isn't really necessary. Again, the important thing here is to realize what circumstances your microphone is meant for. Some microphones are very good at eliminating background noise, so they would be great for a noisy situation. Other microphones pick up every single sound, so they would be great for a quiet environment. Now, the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB is an excellent microphone for under $100. It's a cardio microphone, so it only picks the sounds up around the head of the mic. This also means it almost completely eliminates the background noise. The ATR2100 has both a USB and an XLR output, and it is built, has a built-in headphone jack that allows you to directly monitor your microphone output without audible delay. This feature alone helps you ensure great audio quality. If you want to plug directly into your computer, the ATR2100's USB output is right there for you, and you can plug it into your computer and a good DAW, and you're ready to produce an amazing podcast your listeners will love. You can also use the XLR output and connect it to a mixer. The microphone is perfect for podcasting and field recording. Due to its amazing noise reduction abilities, it's a great microphone for conducting interviews in the field. The ATR2100 currently has a 4.2 out of 5 stars on Amazon. Now there's the Shure PGA48 XLR. It's an excellent budget microphone and one that I use daily. It comes with an XLR cable and runs about $40 on Amazon as of this recording. It is a cardioid microphone, just exactly like the ATR2100. So it's really good at only picking up the sound near the head of the microphone. One amazing thing about the Shure PJ48 XLR is that it has an on-off switch for discrete control of microphone operation. This has come in very handy when podcasting with my co-host. Now, the Shure PGA48 XLR microphone has a healthy 4.4 out of 5 stars on Amazon. If you're the type who likes top-of-the-line equipment, look no further than the Electro Voice RE20 microphone. It's a cardioid microphone just like the other two. This is the industry standard in talk radio. And for good reason, most microphones require the user to learn some decent mic control. This one can even make the most amateurish announcer sound like a polished pro. With this mic and a decent preamp, you'll sound like you're broadcasting from a multi-million dollar studio. The only drawback, just the microphone alone, will set you back $500. And if you want to use it at its full potential, you'll need to get all of the standard accessories. But it's money well spent if you ask me. If you're serious about your podcast, this is the mic I would recommend getting. I have two of them in my studio. The sound quality is great, and I always get really clean, clear recordings of my vocals. It even works great for clients that have no mic control at all. If you can afford it, this is the way to go. Now, as I talk to newer podcasters, they seem to have no understanding of why headphones are such an important piece of equipment. Now, when you wear headphones, 
during recording, it also helps with microphone technique. By hearing what is being recorded as it's happening, you have complete control over your sound. If it's sounding too muffled, you pull away from the microphone or you draw closer if you sound too distant. You should notice how both of these things can have a huge impact on the quality of your sound. Despite this, people think that it's the fault of the microphone when it's just bad microphone technique, easily fixed with some headphones. Now, you can get the Behringer HPX 2000 headphones for under $20. These were made for mixing music. Now, the biggest problem with these headphones is they are very heavy on the bass and the high ends. These headphones are great for the price and most people will be more than satisfied with them. But if you've got some extra money to spend, there are better choices for podcasting. For under $100, you can get these beautiful sounding headphones from Sony, the Sony MDR7506. They're perfect for podcasting and radio. In general, you can listen to them at a high volume and not get very much noise bleed at all. The other great thing about them is how accurate they reproduce mid-range frequencies. This means that when you hear what you hear is almost exactly what you're recording. These are my favorite headphones and I use them daily. Music sounds great through them, but where they shine is on the playback of vocals. If you have the money to spend, don't mess around with anything else. These are the headphones you want in your studio. In almost all cases, you will need a mixer for getting audio into your computer and recording unit. The mixer is what you plug your mic into. If you want to play audio from your phone, tablet, or sampler, you'll also need to plug them into your mixer. The mixer is like the command center for your audio recording sessions. A mixer is just an audio board that can send and receive multiple audio inputs. It allows you to affect those audio signals. Basic mixers give you control over EQ, panning, and volume. Now, more advanced mixers may offer special effects and make possible more advanced mixing techniques. Another thing to look out for is the one mix minus feature. Mix minus is where you can split your audio signals into two separate channels, one channel for you and the other channel for your guest. This allows you to have total control over both sets of vocals, each on their own separate tracks. It's a very convenient feature. If one side needs more compression, you can affect it without altering the other track. This can be done if your mixer has an aux send and return control. This is an advanced editing method that deserves its own blog post, so we'll just leave it at that for now. Now, the last thing to look out for is a USB output. If you want to go straight from the mixer into a computer, you're going to need a mixer with a USB output. Now, this makes the process a whole lot easier, but it also takes away some of your control over the final product. Now, using a USB output restricts the number of channels you can record and assign at once. For basic podcasting, a USB mixer will do just fine, but some podcasters still prefer using an audio interface. So let's take a look at both options. The Behringer Xenix 502 is an amazing and inexpensive mixer. It's a great price to start for the so place to start for a solo podcaster, and this mixer has an XLR mic input as well as four mono outputs. It features volume control for each channel and the two band EQ for your vocals. You can plug in your phone or tablet to conduct interviews, play sound effects, or play bumper music. This is not a USB output mixer. That means you'll have to use an interface to connect it to your computer. Now I recommend something really simple like the UCA302 audio interface. You'll need to run some male to male aux cords from your mixer to the interface. Then you connect the interface to your computer via the USB. Now this is a simple and cheap way to get great audio into your computer for mixing down later. Now it's time to have a little fun and jump into the extreme opposite end of the pricing spectrum. <laughs> this is the ProSonus Studio Live 16 channel mixer. It could easily be considered the Cadillac of mixing boards. It uses FireWire to connect to your computer, and that means the audio quality is the bomb, and the latency is almost zero. It can handle 16 inputs at one time I'm drooling. It can also send and receive audio to and from your computer at the same time. Amazing. It boosts four aux sends and two internal FX buses. The only time you would ever need this kind of hardware is if 
if you're recording a show with multiple hosts and maybe a live board band to boot. Still, a podcaster can dream, right? Now, this one's extremely expensive. It's above $1,000. Now, you have a way to capture your audio and get it into your computer. So, the next step is having some way to record and edit the audio. This type of software is known as a digital audio workstation or a DAW. There are many DAWs on the market, and some are completely free if you can believe that, and others will cost you something. Honestly, a free DAW should do the trick for most of you. Lots of podcasters are using Macs, so that's where we will start. Macs come with GarageBand pre-installed and no additional charge. GarageBand is easy to use, and it can handle a good amount of channels running at one time. Obviously, the more RAM you have, the better GarageBand will run. But for the free software, it's really impressive. It allows control over your tracks individually and comes with a nice collection of effects. If you are a Mac user, this is a great tool for you. For the PC users, there is Audacity. This is a free DAW that is also open sourced. So it's always getting better and better. It's not as pretty or professional as GarageBand is, but it does the job. Now my only real complaint about Audacity is that it doesn't have a built-in MP3 mix down option. You have to get a third party plugin for this, but none of them meet my expectations as an audio engineer. So fortunately, there's a third option, Pro Tools First. It's the new software from Audio Powerhouse Pro Tools. It's free and works great for podcasting. I might be a little partial as I learn to mix audio and Pro Tools, but this is definitely one of my favorites. It's a scaled down version of their paid DAW, but it works great right out of the box. You can even buy affordable quality plugins from the Pro Tools store. The best part is Pro Tools First is available for PC and Mac. It's a great solution for everybody. When it comes to the recording software, as previously mentioned, there are a wide range of them available on the market with a wide range of pricing. Now at Yogi's Podcast Network, we've settled in on Hindenburg Journalist Pro for most of our editing needs. We find it to be extremely useful for our needs. It's designed for editing vocal recordings and that makes it perfect for podcast editing. As with the microphones and the mixers, let's have a look at some really pricey but amazing recording software. If you want to go completely overboard and spend way more money than you have, there's a way. You can always pay for a full-on professional DAW. These are usually made for professional recording studios, so they might be a little bit like using a bazooka to kill a housefly. I would recommend going with one of the free options, but here are a few others that you can empty out your wallet on. Cubase by Steinberg, Logic Pro by Apple, and Pro Tools 12 by Avid. Now again, I have to stress, you can have a great sounding podcast without having to buy an expensive dog. I only included this for those of you who enjoy throwing your money away. This is why I did not review each of the higher end DAWs individually. If you want to throw away your money, you go ahead because they will all work just fine for that. Now, there are many types of cables that you're going to need during your digital workstation creation process. I'm not going to go into a lot of details here. Just watch for my next installment on this where I discuss some additional items you might need. The important thing to remember is that you do not need to spend a bunch of money to get good quality equipment. Use what I've taught you as a guide for selecting equipment that fits your budgetary needs. Now I'm Mike and I am the host of Elite Podcast Academy. Thank you for your time.